Welcome to our discussion on the history of the National Qualification Framework. Allow me to take you back to the early 1970s in South Africa. This was the birth of a strong labor movement in our country. Black trade union demands a better living wage, and this was repeatedly rejected by employees, mostly because workers were unskilled and therefore their demands were unjustified. Now, was it possible to change this sentiment? Training was seen as a means to achieve better wages, and the first foundations were laid for the training and development system we now call the NQF. The mid-1970s also witnessed a demand for a change in education, spearheaded by the non-governmental education sector. Protests were epitomized in the Soweto student uprising of 1976, which was followed by a nationwide student protest. By the 1980s, the entire education system had been discredited and rejected. In 1989, the National Union of Metal Workers of South Africa established a research group consisting of workers and union officials. Their task was to formulate recommendations on training. Obviously, the assumption was that skills development would lead to better wages. A proposal was formulated by them. This proposal, a new education and training system based on a staged improvement in skills, linked to grading increments. All this uncertainty and pressure on the government of the day lead to a realization that there was an urgent need for the restructuring of education and training in South Africa. At that stage, education and training were seen as two complete different disciplines. On the one side, we had expensive education offered by universities, training colleges and technicons. The focus was mainly on academic performance, and all industries widely acknowledged the qualifications. Training, on the other hand, was the responsibility of companies in the workplace, focusing on practical skills with no academic foundation. It was labelled non-accredited training, on-the-job training, and only recognised as experience and not as part of a formal education or a formal Qualification. The announcement by the government in 1990 of its intention to dismantle apartheid gave impetus to the change of policy towards worker and student demands. It was time for a new beginning. In 1992, on a Department of Manpower initiative, a representative task team were formed. This task team established eight working groups charged with developing a new national training strategy. Representatives on the working groups included trade unions, employers, training providers, the state, political representatives from the major political parties and the ANC Education Department. These working groups were responsible for three very important documents that were published in 1994 and can be seen as the foundation for the new integrated framework for education and training. The documents were the National Training Strategy Initiative, the ANC Policy Framework for Education and Training, and the Implementation Plan for Education and Training. They formed the foundation for a few white papers and legislation adopted by the Mandela government and the Mbeki government for years to come.